coming up today on the Wayne Train, we look to get some revenge on Newcastle. We're also trying to go back on top of the Premier League before our second straight cup final here at from Afargo. This time, the EFL Cup, we will take on Chelsea. Welcome to episode number 37 of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argo. I hope you're doing well. As I said, coming up today, Newcastle in the Premier League, that one at home park. Before we do go to Wembley to play our second straight cup final there this time, the Carabao Cup against Maurizio Pochettino's Chelsea. So looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode as well as some transfer updates from late in the January window. Then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated we've got through a fair bit of football off the back of yesterday's episode which was in mid January where we took on QPR in the first league of our Carabao Cup semi and then Leeds United in the Premier League if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner first off the back of that before we have a look at our results since then because obviously some of them do make sense a little bit. You could kind of see coming off the back of what we did in today's episode. But first up, we're going to have a look at the transfers that we did in late January. As some players have already featured in those games that we have played. We actually bought two players in and got rid of one. There were three players who wanted to be on the transfer list. Only one of them ended up getting a move away from the club. And that was Sebastian Hausner in terms of the first team here at Plymouth Argyle. He went out on loan to Norwich. That is a mandatory future fee, so he will no longer be at the club here. Will the centre-back come right back here to be fair this season? Actually did a really good job for us when he was called upon from the bench for the most part, as you can see when he was here, an average rating of 7.14, but he is going to Norwich. That is for a mandatory future fee of 13 million, so to be fair, that is slightly over his suggested transfer value, so I think that's quite a good deal for a player that we did sign for just under £1 million. But because that was a loan deal, it did mean... We didn't get that money up front, albeit our transfer budget did actually get topped up by a couple of million for it, so it was interesting. But it does mean that we dipped into the transfer market for an extra centre back and also had some spare money, which we did sign on another young one. The two players new here at Plymouth Argo to replace the outgoing Sebastian Hausner. First up, we did sign the Hausner replacement from Aberdeen and Paul Tate. Now, this is a young centre back. Was actually looking for someone a bit more first team ready in Sebastian Bohr now who formerly was at Inter Milan but unfortunately by the time he actually accepted coming here as a squad player Manchester United came in for him and they got him instead that one would have been for a future fee of around about 18.5 million instead we're getting this guy from Aberdeen for 12.5 million in Paul Tate as you can see he can cover all three positions at the back and also somehow can play left wing but at 1.86 meters tall he does look like a fairly promising centre back, obviously not quite as first team ready as someone like Sebastian Hausner or Bornau was, but he does have quite a bit of potential as you can see there, four stars gold and five stars including that white one, two stars current ability, so probably won't feature for us too much this season unless we do get some injuries, but still he looks like a very promising player and also being 18 years old should at some stage become homegrown club nation if you decide to take over the save, not actually too sure now when the save will end, because we're actually in quite good form here currently at Plymouth Argyle. And the other transfer that we did, this one was for a fee, because as I said, our transfer budget did get bumped up off the back of Sebastian Hausner leaving us on the 1st of February. Did see that coming, which is why we got Paul Tate coming on the 21st of Jan. Also, a couple of those other players who did want to leave the club, they actually turned down some loan moves and then did ask to be removed from the transfer list in Christensen and also Mosquera, but we signed from Bromby for 7.5 million pounds, Ibrahim Omelagic, he is a right winger come left winger, but definitely looks a bit more natural. Out on that right hand side, he's a wonder kid, with two and a half star current ability, same potential as Paul Tate, that we did get from Aberdeen, and he is a lot more first team ready, I think in terms of his attributes, as you can see, lots of green ones for the Bosnian international already, seven caps for the national team, and just like with Paul Tate, 18 years old, another player who in the future can become both homegrown club and homegrown nation. So two signings there towards the end of the transfer window to make up for that departure of Sebastian Hausner. Neither of them will feature for us 
in the Champions League. A couple of players are a bit upset about that here currently at Plymouth Argyle, but to be fair, our dynamics are still in a pretty good place, and that is largely because our form off the back of yesterday's episode has went about as well as we expected. First up, we had those last two games in the Champions League where it did already look like we were pretty much straight through to the round of 16, and indeed, that happened off the back of a nil or draw at Atletico Madrid, both teams in this game had one or two decent chances, but unfortunately the strikers in this game could not hit the target. But to be fair, we will take that a draw, and that meant that we did go through to the round of 16 with a game in hand. Albeit, we actually won that game in hand 2-0 over Inter Milan, so it does mean in terms of the league phase of the Champions League, we were the top qualifiers, the only team that did not lose a game. But there are some big guns in that first knockout playoff round as you're about to see, as we scroll our way down that top eight in particular, they would all be pretty tough opposition in the round of 16. So I don't think it's going to help us out too much not playing that first knockout playoff round. But it does mean we have a little bit of a break before we get stuck into that. And that could be quite useful considering we'll go to Carabao Cup final and also have the FA Cup to contend with as well. So that's what's gone on in terms of of the Champions League in between those two Champions League games where we just got the job done to make sure we went through to that round of 16. We took on Wigan in the fourth round of the FA Cup, put out a pretty heavily rotated team for this game and picked up a comfortable 3-0 win thanks to goals through Serginho, Des, John Buckley and Damian Pizarro. So it does mean our unbeaten record since going to that standard defensive line continued. Then we took on QPR in the second leg of that Carabao Cup semi-final clash having picked up a 3-0 win first up. In yesterday's episode, yet again, heavily rotated team for this one with that lead, and thankfully, we did pick up a one-all draw. It was not a win, which is a bit disappointing against the team who are struggling in the championship, but still, with the players we put out for this game in the likes of Isaac Varel out left and Omar Lagic for his debut outright, as well as Tate at the back and young goalkeeper Lindley, seeing as Mike Cooper was still out with injury. That's not a bad result, just to make sure we go through 4-1 on aggregate, and as you'll be able to tell, by that intro, we do take on Chelsea as they wipe the floor with West Brom 5-0 in the second leg of their tie. That's the second game coming up in today's episode. Hopefully, we can beat them, unlike what happened with Arsenal in the FA Cup final last season. So that's what's coming up second up in today's episode. Hopefully, we can win our first domestic cup here at Plymouth Argyle. And around that, we've had three Premier League games, two of them draws away from home and won a win in quite emphatic style at home over Manchester United. The draws came away at Tottenham. Late goal here to a Billy Eze did mean that they got a point from that game under Arn Slot. That one did feel a little bit harsh, but to be fair, our goal did come through a penalty, albeit it was scored by the Wayne train, but that late goal does mean, unfortunately, a couple of drop points there on the road. And then that also happened in our most recent game, but in between that, a very nice 4 1 win there over Manchester United. We got off to a good start in this game. Early first half goals to Som and Aliyev. They grabbed one back early in the second half through Rashford, but then with around 20 minutes left, Damien Pizarro, he came off the bench and iced it. And Morgan Worker made sure of it with only 12 minutes left. So that is a very good win over Manchester United. It means we're taking six points off them in the Prem this season, and they can stay down towards the bottom half of the Premier League table, and then a bit of a disappointing result, it has to be said, in our last game, where we took on Brighton. If we picked up a win here, that would have put us in a good position to actually have a points advantage on top of the Premier League if we could beat Newcastle first up in today's episode. But unfortunately, first half of this game, we just weren't quite at the races, starting a few rotation players in place of some who did need a little bit of a rest before this big double that we have coming up in today's episode. First half, as you can tell by the XG match story, we were well and truly on the back foot, and Jao Pedro made sure it counted for something. But thankfully, Mosquera, with 20 minutes left off the back of an Aaron Kunda assist, when he came off the bench, as per usual, that was a goal that made sure that we took something from this game. So not quite in the best form off the back of yesterday's episode, but doing the job enough to make sure that we've done what we need to in the UCL and in the Carabao Cup as well as the FA Cup. And in terms of the Premier League, we could still go top, of it if we can beat Newcastle first up in today's episode. But what it shows is if we beat Brighton, like you probably expect us to, considering they're all the way down in 18th, we would have been in a position to actually make sure it was a points advantage instead of just one on goal differential if we can get the job done here over Newcastle, but still in a pretty good position in all the competitions that we're taking part in here at Plymouth Argyle. Hopefully, 
that can continue because so far still yet to taste defeat since we have switched to that standard defensive line at the end of last week. But first up today, we take on Newcastle United. They are just inside of a European qualifying spot at the moment. And we're one of the teams alongside Leeds United who did beat us in that funny picture form that we did have back in October where things just went a little bit of a rife for us with that high defensive line here at Plymouth Argyle. And that was a 3-0 thrashing as well. They absolutely thumped us there at St. James's Park. Hopefully we can get some revenge on them here and take some good form into that Carabao Cup final before we probably rotate a bit more against Leicester City in the fifth round of the FA Cup. In terms of injuries for this one, one of the reasons that we did get Omolagic in was Mohamed Bulumi. He continues to struggle since coming back from that broken lower leg that he suffered in our first preseason friendly. These days, a twisted ankle. He is out, unfortunately. has got very little football in him this season. He might be someone we do need to get rid of if we do another season of this save, but that does mean Omodogic has got some game time in the cup competitions, and it's probably likely to continue to get that thing as Bloomy is a bit of broken glass in terms of that left leg at the moment. That's the only injury that we are dealing with. It does mean that hopefully we can go pretty close to full strength for both games in today's episode, and we'll come back shortly and hopefully go back on top of the Premier League as we host Newcastle United. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. The only one that will take place in the Premier League. There's our team. It's our first choice 11 for the first time in a little while. We've been able to put out this team. Also been giving them rest in some of those games where it didn't quite mean so much with our situation in those competitions. Newcastle coming to this one in some pretty good form. And also for some reason, despite being the away team, they're going to be wearing green. We are now white. Not too sure what that's about. Good old Saudi money, but hopefully we can pick up a win and go back on top of the Premier League. And it hasn't taken too long for the first highlight in this game. A corner here in our favour and some odds. It's just going to float this one into the mix. It goes far post and picks out Usmana Diamonde, his third goal of the season. Of course, he scored his first one back in our season opener at Old Trafford against Manchester United team, who I wish we could play every week because they are absolutely awful this season. But that's a brilliant start, Diamonde, at the far post there. Beats Diogo Costa in goal, and we take a nice early 1-0 lead here at home park. And nearly 10 minutes off the back of that opening goal. Now we are down the other end here for a throw into Newcastle United inside of the final third. They play that one back to near Kate. He starts to make his way forward. Tries to square that one for Rodriguez, but good work there. I think that was from Som to win that ball back for us. Then a foot in there from Iliev. Not too sure how legal it was, but we do find the ball now on Sarawi. He makes his way forward down that left-hand side from Rinkunda. And a good battle at the moment for that starting spot. And the first team, now Ricardo Horta there goes down. And a very interesting tackle from Tenali on a yellow card. Thankfully for him, did not connect. Interesting highlight there. Horta might here be forced from the field. That might be why this corner is taking a while to take place. But Iliev actually went close from a subsequent shot. But still 1-0. And just making way now past the half hour mark in this game, nothing happened from that subsequent corner off the back of that injury to Horta, which did force him from the field. But we get a highlight here with about 10 minutes left in the first half. And we try and put pressure here on Newcastle as they do look to play out from the back. Most of that highlight was just me waiting for that corner to take place. And it was a pointless one, so a long highlight now. Newcastle here with some pretty dodgy off-the-ball challenges. But Iliev will put that one away, albeit the assistant referee down the bottom right corner. He has put his flag up, so I don't think this one is going to count, but that would have been a bit of justice there because Newcastle are going quite hard after some of our players in this game before Tenali. Very lucky not to connect with someone. Otherwise, he probably would have got a second yellow, but unfortunately, Iliev is just offside, and we're still only 1-0 in front. And we make our way now into four minutes of injury time in this first half, and there is one more highlight as Newcastle win that ball down the right-hand side, Isaac on a yellow card, but good work there from Sarawi to get that one back for us. So far, most of these highlights in this half are in our favour in the Wayne train. Nice ball forward there to Aliyev. Can he this time put it away from an onside position? Unfortunately, that time, good save from Costa to keep it at 1-0, but certainly the first half here has been dominated by the home team in the away uniform. Might be a bit of fire in the boys' belly because we are wearing the white here at home park, but we do try and get something going from this corner, unfortunately. That won't be the case as Smith does get that one back for the away team. Nothing happening, and that is half time. A pretty good first half from us, but unfortunately, only one goal up does feel like we potentially could be in front 
by a slightly bigger margin going in to the second half of this one. But our yeah, guys are playing well. You know, I don't think we need to make any changes going in to the second half. Seems we've been quite dominant. So we'll tell the guys they're doing well can hopefully do a bit better, grab a cushion goal, and go back on top of the Premier League with a win. And just show the arm mark first highlight here of the second half, and Serginho Des will float that one into the mix. A little bit of aerial ping pong here, but Nia Kate does win that one, and Inizzi does get that one for Newcastle, and they do actually have quite a few numbers forward here. A chance for them to do something on the counter-attack. Alexander Isaac squares that one really nicely for Maliando Chluko, and Newcastle United do grab an equaliser here. And that's a bit of payback for the fact that we were not clinical enough with our chances in that first half. That's really the first time they've been on the attack in this game. And Alexander Isaac, their really nice ball across the face of goal. We were caught out off the back of having a chance down the other end where that aerial ping pong did ensue. And unfortunately, that makes it one all. And off the back of that goal, we're going to make some changes. Des on a 6.5, as is Sarawi, Nestori, and Mosquera can come on for them and also... We'll bring on Obando for Iliev, also struggling. Free changes as we try and go back in front here, now that it's one all. And in fact, right off the back of that, a couple more players now have gone down to Red Hearts. Apparently Tobias there's picked up a stub finger or something, but no orange injury. He can stay on, but our defensive midfield as well as Samadzic, they are on Red Hearts. We'll take off Scott for Bishov because he's not on a green rating. As well as that, just debating who we might also bring on, Samadzic and Son, both quite similar players as they can be quite injury prone. I think though, Adam Randall, in this case, our right wing depth is a bit stronger than our ball wing midfield one, and we'll get stuck into the last little bit of this game once those subs actually go through. Still locked up at one all. And just about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, we do get a chance here to try and play out from the back and do quite well down this right hand side and actually get the ball forward here to the Wayne train so far. Solid if not spectacular. In this one, but Newcastle pull clearance there, and Kunda will try and square that one. Now there was a foot in the air. It took one of our strikers off the ball, but thankfully Samadzic can fizz that one across the face of goal. And Aaron Kunda, who can have such a good impact off the bench, that's actually one of the reasons I quite like him as a bench player. But he continues to pick up goals and assists, and he does the same here. And that's a big goal as well to put us two one in front. Of the ball there falls to Samadzic after I think that was a bando who they took out from behind didn't connect with the ball, but play was allowed to continue. Thankfully, we do put the ball in the back of net, and now with 10 minutes left, we'll go back to positive and try and hold on to this 2-1 lead. And now in the last 10 minutes of this game, I think it's time for us to now try and slow things down in terms of time-wasting, also tempo, and tell our guys to be more disciplined. We'll also pause this game, because that's continuing for some reason, and hopefully just make sure that Newcastle get no more chances, and we can pick up three points to go back on top of the league. And thankfully so far those time-wasting changes have worked as we make our way into seven minutes of added time. So there's still some time here for Newcastle to try and do something late in this game, but thankfully no highlights yet. And Sandro Tonale, I have just noticed, has got injured. To be fair, he was walking a fine line on that yellow card earlier in the game anyway, putting in some pretty rough challenges, but we do have a chance here to potentially actually make this 3-1 late as Gutierrez has the ball down that left-hand side, tries to square that one. It thankfully finds its way out to Bischoff. Hopefully can just play things safe here and hold on to the ball. To be fair, we should be close to a full-time whistle, but these will be three points that would put us back on top of the table. Big chance here for Erin Kunda to pick up a double, but to be fair, that forces a very good save out of Costa and goal for Newcastle. Hopefully now we can take our time on this corner and wait for the full-time whistle, which should surely be coming up any second now, albeit doesn't look like that will be the case, but Samajic here does take his time about to float this ball into the mix. It goes near post. They head that one away, and Newcastle thankfully don't win the race to that ball. The Wayne train does instead, but the highlight will continue. Erin Kunda does lose out to Bellanova, but the aerial ping pong in Newcastle here might actually get a chance on the counter. Thankfully, a slide tackle to win that ball. For some reason, this game's going close to 100 minutes. Maybe that Tonali injury a bit more serious than we thought. But thankfully, we just do enough there to pick up a 2-1 win, get some revenge on Newcastle United like we did yesterday against Leeds. That one a bit closer. But thankfully, we grab a late goal there through Nestri Erin Kunda off the back of an early second half equaliser. Two Truco first half goal there, Diamonde from set piece did give us an early lead. They did deal with a couple of injuries in that game. That might have hindered them 
a little bit, but thankfully we pick up three points there at home park. We are dropping points of late, but thankfully picking up wins when we absolutely need to. And that does mean we'll go back on top of the Premier League, albeit just based on our goal to Frank Jula. That is good. Hopefully we can turn that into a points advantage soon because our last couple of games in the season, we take on the likes of Liverpool, Man City, as well as Aston Villa. So ideally, we'd have a bit of a buffer going in to those last couple of games of the season, but thankfully back on top of the prem off back of that 2-1 win over Newcastle United. We'll come back shortly and take on Chelsea in a Carabao Cup final. <laughs> yeah. And not so fast, because just getting back into the inbox off the back of that first game of today's episode, thought this injury was not that big a deal considering we didn't have to take him off. But our first choice goalkeeper and captain here at Plymouth Argyle in Casper Tobias has fractured his finger. He's out for two to three weeks. We're probably going to have to start Mike Cooper in a cup final. Thankfully, he has just come back from injury himself, was on the bench for that last game. But of course, last year's FA Cup final. He had an absolute shocker. Let's hope that won't happen this time around and we can win the Carabao Cup. And here are the team sheets for our second straight cup final we have made here at Plymouth Argyle, having lost that FA Cup one to Arsenal, be at that stage of team. We didn't really think that we could beat Chelsea a different thing entirely because we beat them 6 2 earlier when we did come back from 2 0 down at Home Park, also 4 all at Stamford Bridge this season and before then also. Very good record away from home against these guys. Definitely a team we know that we can beat, albeit these days. They do have Ali Wahi up front. That could be a bit of a game changer, but just one change for us. Mike Cooper coming in for Tobias for obvious reasons. Hopefully that doesn't prove too costly, but an early highlight here at Wembley in this season's Carabao Cup final. Hopefully can pick up Plymouth Argyle's first cup success of all time in this game. But it is an early highlight here. Chelsea are on the front foot. Wahi plays that one forward to Lovumbo down the right-hand side, does quite well to find Gallagher and plays it back to Lovumbo. But good week there from Gutierrez and Scott over the Somme. And we can just try and consolidate position, albeit back pass. He tries to come out there as Mike Cooper, doesn't quite fully commit. It's a shocking start. And Ali Wahi, the one change since we last played Chelsea in terms of a big transfer, he puts that one away. It's a bit of a gift and not the start we want in a cup final. And hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. With Mike Cooper in goal, just felt like there was a bit of a lack of communication there between him and Som, and it proves costly. We go 1-0 down after only 5 minutes. And would you believe it? It looks like that's going to be the only highlight of the first half in this Carabao Cup final. It's a bad mistake from us, and it does mean we go into the sheds 1-0 down to be fair. Chelsea slightly on top, but thankfully we can make some changes here because lots of players are going. Paulie Graves can come off for Parola on a yellow card. Mascara for Dest. Dest at the moment. Not in too good a form. Also in this three for Sarawi and Pizarro for the Wayne train. They're all not doing too well. Hopefully those changes might kick us into gear. And we don't lose back-to-back -back cup finals to get the second half underway. 1-0 down. And it hasn't taken too long here in the second half for us finally to get on the front foot of Brown here inside the final third. Nestri picks out Alex Scott, tight angle, but will take on the shot and does beat Sanchez there in goal for Chelsea. It actually looks like both teams here are going with their backup goalkeepers. Us not by choice, but thankfully we do get back all square in this one nice and early in the second half. And history are in Kunda yet again with some good bench impact, albeit this one probably a bit more of an effort from Alex Scott from that tight angle. Great work from him to put that one away, and we're back level in the Carabao Cup final. And we now inside the last half hour of this game, just keeping a big eye here on which players do go down to Red Heart first, obviously, with all those changes at halftime. We do only a one sub left. Now, Miguel Gutierrez picked up a yellow early in this half, but unfortunately, no more defensive options on the bench. Simon Som, don't think we want to put Randall on in a cup final, so the sub we're going to make will take off Samadzic for Morgan Whitaker. That's our last sub as we're inside the last 20 minutes, and it's still one all. And just about to make our way into injury time in this cup final, there is a late corner here in favour of Chelsea. Christopher and Kunku, who we are tight marking, has just come onto the field. He will be taking this one. We'll float this one towards the far post. Cooper doesn't come out for it. That's something that Tobias would probably usually do. But thankfully, Dezazi, disaster of a header. It just goes over the bar. There is going to be here four minutes of added time. Chelsea, definitely a team stats-wise on the front foot. But thankfully, only one more shot on target compared to us despite the fact we've had half as many in this game, and it's one all as we will head in two extra time. Thankfully, off the back of this, just an FA Cup game against Leicester. If we lose that, I'm okay with it. If we can pick up this competition, 
but one more sub here in extra time. Nikola Ilyev's down to a red heart on a 6.4. That's the worst rating of those players who are on a red heart. So Obando can come on for him. We'll tell the guys they can still win this. And hopefully they can prove me right as we get stuck in to extra time. And it hasn't taken too long here for the first highlight of extra time. Albeit it is here Chelsea on the attack. And Kunku was making his way forward. But good work there from Diamonde to intercept that one. And then from Pizarro to actually keep that ball. Thankfully now we'll find Gutierrez. In some space down that left hand side, plays that forward to Erin Kunda into the mixer for Alan Obando. And I think he's on side. The assistant referee towards the top of the screen hasn't put his flag up, and that might be a big goal to give us a lead here. And if it is a goal, which it is, our players are celebrating, we will go back to positive like we did late in that Newcastle United game because we've we'll been doing that recently. It does seem to just make us a bit more solid at the back. But Nestor Erin Kunda gets another assist off the bench. Our young guns at left wing here. Doing a brilliant job currently at Plymouth Argo. We'll give the guys some praise. That could be a big goal. It could be a Carabao Cup winning one there. Scored by Alan Obando. Albeit just before we enter half time here in the first part of extra time. There is now Chelsea on the ball. And they try and find some space down this left hand side through Mudrick. Now through Nkunku. Kaiseido squares that one nicely. Former Mateus Nunez does get a shot off. But thankfully Graves will block that one. He's been quite good since coming on. For Parola at halftime. Nice ball forward there for Jimenez though. But thankfully just misses the target. That was a big chance there for Chelsea to equalise late in the first part of extra time. But we're still 2-1 in front. And just getting the second half of extra time underway. And there is a highlight here immediately from the restart. Just off the back of me adjusting some opposition instructions. Seeing as Chelsea have made quite a few subs in this extra time period. And they are on the attack here. Livumbo, he'll find in Kunku. Very similar spot to where he hit that corner late. In regular time. Now, Lavumbo there with a shot from close range, but thankfully, Jacob Graves yet again with a really good block. As I said before, he's been quite good since coming on at halftime. But to be fair, so far, Nestri and Kunda, the big difference maker, Chelsea, still on the attack, but thankfully, Diamonde will head that one away. We'll see if this highlight will continue. Looks like it might all be in Kunku is going backwards. The highlight now stops, and thankfully, we're still up by two goals to one. And shot at the back of that early highlight in the second half to Chelsea. Now it's time for us here with 10 minutes left of extra time to start to time waste a little bit. And hopefully that might mean no more chances for Chelsea. Also this time we'll go back to a mid block as well because it is a cup final. Hopefully we'll be taking home the Carabao Cup. And thankfully no highlights off the back of us going to sometimes time wasting. Now it's time for the last five minutes of this game. We'll bump that up to frequent. And hopefully that means that we can hold on here to our 2-1 lead. Lots of tired players out there, but hopefully that's also the case for Chelsea. Stats-wise in this game, they've definitely been the better team, but somehow they've had less shots on target. That has been their Achilles heel so far in this one. And finally, we pick up our first trophy as a top-flight club here at Plymouth Argo. It's been a couple of years now since we did win the championship in our first season. To be fair, it's the cup that no one really cares about unless you actually win it, but all the other teams celebrated when they win it. So we will too. It's the first time in Plymouth Argos history they do win a big domestic cup. We've done it. We pick up a 2-1 win over Chelsea in the final of the EFL Energy Carabao Cup at Wembley. That is a big win for us. Keeps up our good record of late against Chelsea and does continue this unbeaten record we do have since we did go back to that standard defensive line late last week off the back of that poor runner form we did have against teams like Leeds and Newcastle United, who thankfully we have vanquished in our last couple of games in the Premier League. But that is a big win. Hopefully gives us some momentum going into the latter part of the Premier League as well as the Champions League. Because at the moment, teams are really struggling to beat us here at Plymouth Argo. But that is a good achievement. Finally, win our first domestic cup here at the Pilgrims with a 2-1 win after extra time over Chelsea in the Carabao Cup. So our first bit of major silverware here at Plymouth Argo, we pick up the Carabao Cup there with a 2-1 win over Chelsea, and Nestri are in Kundi again with some great bench impact to be fair, that first assist, that one. I think more of the work was done there by Alex Scott, but really nice ball there late in extra time for Alan Obando, who did come off the bench, and thankfully that paid off. He scores the winning goal, does the young Ecuadorian. You can see we win the EFL Cup for the first time. Chelsea trying to defend that crown. We beat them 2-1. We get 100k for that. We lead them to glory. Everyone's happy with us. Aaron Kunda, two assists. Absolutely love him as well. 
is the Wayne Train, the A-League Link Cup, working quite nicely here at Plymouth Argyll and Cooper quite happy that we gave him a little bit of a spray at halftime and our guys picked up the performance in the second half and the extra time to pick up that 2-1 win. And also, it does mean that if for some reason we drift down the Premier League table, which hopefully won't be happening because at the moment in quite a good position, but it does now mean we've got European football locked in for next season here at Plymouth Argyle, albeit only for the Europa Conference League. Hopefully we can get something a little bit better than that if we do need one more season of this save, but that will do it for today's episode, finishing off nicely with that 2-1 win in the Carabao Cup final over Chelsea, and also going back on top of the Premier League with a 2-1 win over Newcastle United. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. Now, in terms of when we'll come back for tomorrow's episode, we were supposed to play Arsenal in between our round of 16 in the Champions League. That has now been changed because they've got Europa League things which they're doing, which is very, very Arsenal. But we might come back for the round of 16 in the Champions League. Actually, not too sure now if we're going to finish this season by the end of this week, depending on how we do get on in the Champions League. But we'll see how that round of 16 does go once it does get drawn. I'll show you what's happening so far in the first knockout playoff round into PSG, Dortmund and Roma all through, and Bayern, Napoli and Real Madrid also in pretty good positions. The one tie that could go either way is Chelsea and Monaco. And to be fair, we know that we can beat Monaco, but still those would all be pretty tough ties for us in the round of 16. So we might come back for that and we'll see what's in and around that as well if we play something else as well as a league of that round of 16 of the Champions League in tomorrow's episode, but we'll probably come back in the not too distant future and get stuck in to the Champions League knockouts. And also, as I said, we take on Arsenal pretty soon in the Prem. That's going to be a massive game in terms of title aspirations. If we can win that one, that should put us in a good position before things get a bit tougher in the last month or two with games, as I said earlier, against the likes of Aston Villa and Liverpool and Man City. And those two little ones are away from home, so we do need to build up a bit of a buffer, I think, to try and lift the Premier League this season before that run home. But as I said, we'll come back tomorrow, probably do something involving the Champions League. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.